with Immortaru, who uh, the mid laner for Dark Passage from 2016 to 2017. Uh, this guy is a streamer now, but again, another pro level player. Yeah. Uh, these are definitely some monstrous guys in the narrow regions. What I love about this though, like BCS as well as TCL, you know, Vietnam and Turkey, these are two really strong regions sniffing at the heels of the, the old school regions, you know? And I, I want to see what these guys are going to do, how they're going to pick up uh, the 2v2 and, and how the players represent their respective regions. Haima, uh, Nico, Yasuo, Caitlyn. Is that the first Caitlyn bad? I think it might be. I think so. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, you know what? I, I've written, I do believe. I've written it down as well, okay. so I should just check. That's um, a good idea. And yes, it is the first okay. Caitlyn bad, but I'm glad to see no Caitlyn yet. Because she definitely signals the 100 CS gameplay or tower. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it can be one of those things where you got to kill, but only usually because the other team is kind of desperate and trying to all in yeah. uh, most of the time. Um, but looking like a lot of pokes so far, you know, that has been more the strategy. Uh, Brand Jace would certainly be going towards that. Lux Zareth would be all about that poke. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be a battle of poke versus poke, dodging skill shots. I do feel like... Uh, can be pretty tough for Brand against uh, two of these mages that just kind of have longer range than him. Uh, that being said, pretty good push on the side of, of, of this Brand, but... Zale, I love Turkey's duo. Yeah. If I look at this, I think that the theory behind the skill shots on Zareth mm -hmm. plus Lux, that you can hit somebody through minions. Yeah. Um, you know, that light binding onto a much shorter range Brand could be game changing. Yeah, I feel like Brand is going to have a really tough time. Uh, I do like the Varus pick a, a lot, and certainly there is a, a huge potential for the all in uh, from QTV and Zeros if they can actually you know, hit their combo and close the gap to do that. But tough for Brand to kind of move forward uh, into both the Zareth and the Lux, where if you get hit by a Zareth stun, yeah, if you get yeah. hit by a Light Binding, you're going to get hit by all the other skill shots, and that's going to be pretty, pretty rough. Oh, okay. Let's see who's going to work out. Um, of course, reminder, this is the Pro-Am. Professionals and amateurs side-by-side. -side. Charity 2v2. At minimum, every single duo will get $10,000 to donate towards a charity of their choice. And if you make it all the way through to the final and win, that will be bumped up to 100 grand to a charity of their choice. As we're looking at the photos. Not too bad. Definitely thinking face. Standard, standard pose, standard pose. Yeah, it's, pretty it's, good. You know, not, not exactly out there. Let's see how it's like. It's kind of like you know, a little smirk. That is the face of a man who killed Faker. That is. Right? Remember that, is that accurate. face. Yeah. Remember that face. We'll forget the fact or ignore the fact that he had, I think, three or four members of his team with him, right? <laughs> and he just got the final hit. That's but all you need to know. It still that's counts. The, that's the TLDR there. <laughs> it still counts. Um, all right, Zareth plus Lux taking on Brand versus Varus. It has been. Okay. Heavily dominated by Poke. Four Comets. Today. Um, I really think I like Immortaru and Dumbledoge. Um, yeah. In terms of uh, uh, names, QTV plus Zeros is QTZ. Uh, and on the other side, it's Dumbledoru. Yeah. That's pretty good. It is pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. But yeah, I, I definitely am, am favoring the, the Zerath Lux here. But anytime you're playing Skillshot Champions, it has a chance to go awry. So uh, we'll see how accurate they are going to be. I don't know what you mean by that, because I only play Eddie Carey. Okay. It's a nickname, right? And I traditionally play what Eddie What about Ezreal? That, no, he's not in my kit. <laughs> I play like Twitch and Caitlyn. Okay. So <laughs> I, I only know how to right click. You got that Caitlyn cue. What if you miss your tilt over oh, snake? No. Quick job. <laughs> if you are queuing in the late game, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> so uh, we'll never forget that piece of information. Let's see what Dumbledoge can do, because it's his light binding that I'm gonna need to track. I think yeah. that's the that's the skill shot that's the biggest the biggest threat. Um, along with that shocking orb, but going through minions will help out and early early push advantage here to Zeros and QTB. Yep, it is so far. Um, minion dematerializer is an interesting one here. That just kind of signals that they're looking fully for the push. Uh, that won't turn on for, for quite a bit of time, so we'll see what position they're in by the time it actually does come on. Uh, his teammate is going to be running Biscuits. I do think Brand, regardless, would have probably been the main target, though, for the Lux and the Zera. So yeah. uh, we'll see how well he can actually dodge these skill shots. Because yeah. for now, it hasn't you know, been too, too much about about the farming. It feels like they're more focused instead of wave clear on just trying to hit that boat. A little bit more of a defensive setup on the side of Immortal Zera. Um, wave push pretty heavily in favor of Brand and Varus for now. I think having that 80 carry is going to help out. Yeah. Uh, piercing arrows, 
as well as that hail of arrows, rather. It definitely helps. It's also, you know, kind of just down to the focus of, of what the teams are doing, though, because you can see that Xeros is actually spending his spells on the minion wave, uh, and both the Lux and the Xerath are looking for skill shots yeah. on the champions. So you can see that QTV and Xeros are trying to play outside the minion wave to not allow the other team to hit both them and the minions at the same time, which is, you know, pretty smart because then you have to decide, do you want to go for push? Do you want to go for poke? A uh, combination of both. Does one do one, one does the other? You kind of have to be able to delegate a bit there. And I guess I also think if you're going on the side of Xeros and QTV, you have the ability to all in later. Well, Pillar of hit. comes up, QTV gets counter stunned though. Summon a heal used by Xeros. That will keep QTV alive. Dumbledore's low on HP, low on mana. Flash and heal available and Immortal used for two potions. So a little bit of advantage this should give um, the Turkish duo some time to get CS back up. But look at that. Long range skill shots from the Eye of uh, Destruction and that Lucent Singularity. Yeah, looking for a lot of that poke certainly. Double Dodge is very low. They, they don't want to give up all this farm though. They don't want to give over a big farm advantage. So uh, we'll see how well a Motoru can, can kind of do at picking up all this CS. This should be fairly even uh, if he can collect most of it. That's not too bad. Yeah, doing pretty well. But they're still behind. I mean, the, the, the wave is pushing forward. There's still nine CS down. Yeah. Now, okay, insta kill. Insta kill's not the right word. Burst kill once they hit six. You know, right of the arcane plus final spark. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be enough to get through? I mean, there's no flash. I, I, think it's, I think it's definitely possible. You, you can you can one combo a Brand or a Varus, okay. but you need to have the setup. You need to hit the Light Binding or the Zera Stun to be able to actually kind of set it all up. Um, and I think that the, the skill shots are easier to hit from the other side. Oh, Dumbledore, what are you doing? Oh. He just recalled. And now he's down to 100 HP, no consumables available. Still yeah. sitting on both summoners, so unless you play the, the perfect bait, you're just going to give up the first kill uh, to Vietnam. Yeah, we'll see. Um, there are kind of, you know, the recalls are not all synced up. You can yeah. see Brand is actually going back to base now. So it is kind of a 2v1 right now, uh, which allows Dumbledore to maybe stick around a bit, uh, look for a bit of that poke. But he's got to go back. I mean, he's just way too low at this point. And, and now again, because of those desynced recalls, it's going to be Zareth who's in that 1v2. So yeah. he's going to kind of have to back off and play it a bit safe. And once um, QTV's brain gets back to lane, he's got six charges in the minion dematerializer now. So already with a CS advantage. Remember the win conditions. If you have just joined us in 2v2, it's 100 CS, two kills, or the tower. Um, so pretty much the 1v1 rules, except with an extra kill. Yep, yep, exactly. Uh, pretty much the same there. And you know they're, they're playing this very smart. I, I think that you know, if they were to go for purely the poke, it would be a, a lot harder uh, for QTV and Xeros. But they have a really good push. They're just shoving this in. They're going to be able to use the minion dematerializer now. And uh, they're opening up a pretty sizable advantage as, as far as the, the farm discrepancy is going. But there's a binding. Oh, not going to find a stun, though. Yeah. Double Doge, I think he actually stepped over that pillar of flame as well. I'm looking for some CC. Double Doge looked like he was going fishing throughout that shield uh, in the event of something to chase. And of course, the winner here. We'll also move on to face Maple. Oh, there's the... And there's the flash forward. That's Double Dodge with a counter flash. He's used the heal as well. This is everybody in for the fight. The heal the shield. By some time, but simply not enough. Immortru's got the right of the arcade. He channels it. That one. one. That's two. That's three. All right, it's a one for one. Next kill wins the game. Oh, my God. This is actually so close now. And Xeros is still very low. He does have a potion running. Uh, his, he'll be back up pretty soon here, but Immortal still has his flash available. We'll see if he can get anything done. <laughs> that was fantastic. I love the style points. All right, next kill will win it. Uh, 7 CS is the difference. I'm looking at the purchases. QTV's not used any dematerializer charges yet. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's really yeah. thinking for. Maybe, maybe just kind of slipping his mind there a bit. Pressure of the stage here going up against these guys. They're going for the kills. Okay? They are going, going for, the, for kills. the kills. But then you've, you've... I don't even need my room. I'm going to take the <laughs> materializer and not even Thank use you. it. Thank you. It's about sending a message. It is. Azale, yeah. QTV, with his uh, former professional play background, is now sending a clear signal. He's got himself there with full of a potion. And now I think, like, the next... The next misstep or the next hard CC should pick up a kill. Although, QTV, no ultimate yet. 
Um, he's level 5, Zerus level 7, Double Doge uh, 6, and Immortal 7. So, level advantage in favor of Turkey. Yeah, you know, they have been able to force the brand to play pretty far back. Missing experience sometimes has been sent back to base a couple times. And, you know, because of those desynced minion recalls, you did see a lot more of the experience going over to the Varus. Uh, but Chain of Corruption just about back up, and you know, Brand will hit six on this minion wave. Yep. He can get in range. Oh, it's oh, so the, Fury, the final spark! Not enough to pick up the kill. Right to the arcane, still on cooldown. Chain of Corruption will tag out in Mortaru. And now QTV's got himself access to Pyroclasm. That's a step oh, forward. Binding. One more charge. The autos are on. 120 oh. second oh. kill picked up by Xeros. And it was the re engage from the Varus that took him down. I need to see that final fight. Uh, yeah, Dumble Doge gets knocked down. They wanted that kill so, so badly. Not quite able to find it. Probably our closest 2v2 yet. That one was right down to the wire. Both teams had really low players. It was down to the final kill. I really like seeing the swinging control. Like, it felt to me as that Dumble Doge and Imutsuru were actually, like, reclaiming control of the game. Yeah, I mean, they, they did a really good job here, but you can see the poke. Uh, getting double those fairly low. This was that first kill, I do believe. Yeah, the first one for, for the one. all in. Looks like he might have barely been able to survive with that Lux Shield, but uh, you could see Varus coming in, finishing it off. And this was just great Varus play. Three for three on his yeah. ultimate, evening up that kill score. And it all came down to this zero, so, so low. Dumbledore's trying to, to move in there and help finish him off, but just gonna get comboed out, kind of by QDB, taking a lot of damage. He is very squishy. You can see that Brandall uh, proccing the passive, and then... He into also. Yeah, Zeros just comes back in and finishes him off. That was so, so close. Both the VCS players were like 10% HP. It really felt like... Um... The Varus are backed off. Like, completely gone, yep. disengaged with the fight. Dumbledore on your screen right now. He and Immortaru, they went fishing in it. And unfortunately, they could not make it work. Um, all right, we're moving on to our next 2v2. Uh, let's take a look. Who will be represented? Starting off with Team Japan. Uh, Sutanmi and Seros taking on Flash in the Night and Diamond Prox representing the CIS. Uh, so let's start with some of the Japanese representatives. Uh, Sutanmi, uh, most popular Japanese streamer. Uh, this guy, not known for being the most serious. Uh, yep. Likes to have a little bit of fun, likes to troll around a little bit. Yeah, he wants to troll around a little bit, but not too much here at all. Sorry, he doesn't want to troll his own teammate. Uh, he's got the ruler out here. Getting it, getting it perfect. This, the I, first guy I, I saw doing this, you know, it was back in like the Brood War days. You saw some pro gamers using it, trying to get make sure everything is exactly uh, the right height, the right distance from their face. Everything is exactly how they're they're using it. I love this. This isn't even just distance for now. This is just making sure it's straight. Mm -hmm. He's measuring the corner of each monitor. Uh, Seros, of course, mid laner for detonation focus. Me, this is a guy who's been on the international stage a whole bunch. We've seen him a ton. Diamond Prox, one of the original counter junglers, one of the legacy old school, um, one of the first really famous junglers to, to hit the scene. He's going to be joined by Flash in the Night, who is a former pro, uh, now turned streamer and caster for League of Legends and the CIS. Yeah, he's, he's a caster for the LCL, uh, which is definitely really cool. And as you say, I mean, Diamond Prox, uh, he was revolutionary. You know, he invented a, a lot of new jungle styles. He was one of the first guys uh, to really kind of uh, be a pioneer for the more modern jungle style. And, yeah. uh, has made uh, a completely huge name for himself in the scene over the years. And it'll be pretty exciting to see how they are going to pair up. Uh, Seros is, has a pretty nasty Heimerdinger as well, uh, which you know has has worked out pretty well for him. I did believe we got to see it actually in World's Play yep. and everything. It didn't actually get any wins, but uh, that, that, uh, it's the certainly his is, signature pick. The problem is his Heimerdinger was outclassed <laughs> by the world's best Hyun and Digger. Okay. So while it was great to see, mm -hmm. you know, he was just he he was playing checkers and Hyun and was playing 4D checkers. Well, maybe like he's uh, studied up on those bods. Maybe he's uh, brushed up on that Hyun Let's and Digger. Let's see if he finds himself on the band pool. Uh, what is fun about this one, by the way, we're now on the other side of the bracket. Mm -hmm. So the first four games was the left hand side. Uh, they will be playing one of the, the the four representatives who won will then make it to the final. Now we're on the right hand side of the bracket. Uh, of course, reminder: this is the two v two. Pro Am for charity, and uh, Sero Stun Me, which is Sutan Me and Seros taking on Diamond Flash, Flash in the Night, and Diamond Prox. Uh, Poke has been the name of the game. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of kills, in fact. Of the four games played, three of them 
have gone to a kills victory, and only one went to 100 CS. So that does make me happy. Yep, no turret really threatened at all so far. We've seen maybe a turret like half-ish HP is, is, is about as uh, close as that has gotten. And, yep. You know, a lot of the kills have also been because people were kind of threatened into those all-ins. You know, when people are, are getting CS advantages, it's forcing the other team's hand, trying to make them go in for those all-ins, which uh, may be disadvantageous. And so far, you know, as you say, it's been all really about Comet. Dark Harvest is, is pretty much not been seen at all, yeah. uh, which does make sense, I think, with the nerfs coming in and also the fact that, you know, it gets stronger throughout the game with that stacking up. I think it's good to say, I haven't actually said this yet in the, the previous games. We are playing on a live patch. It is 824. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these pros that have come in, you know, they flew in, landed on sort of Monday or Tuesday this week. Um, haven't had a lot of time to adapt. I believe NA server was patched Tuesday night, if I recall correctly. Uh, but basically, in the last few days. Yep. So this is a lot of theory crafting, this is a lot of reading the